Okay, let's get started. Welcome to today's uh, webinar on uh, AI and teaching and learning. I am Lewis Johnson, the, uh, head, the uh, host of the overall series. Um, I'm joining you from Los Angeles today. I hope you are all staying safe wherever you are. Uh, we're gonna be talking today about how to use avatars to help teach English and other languages. A uh, little background on me. I have worked in the area of artificial intelligence and education for a number of years. I founded Alelo to make it possible so that we could offer this technology to teachers and learners around the world, which is um, exactly what we're doing. So we're gonna be focusing today on helping learners improve their communication skills, speaking and listening. Uh, surveys of language teachers around the world indicate that these are very important skills, often the most important skills for learners, the most difficult for them to, uh, to pick up uh, in part because Improving speaking and listening skills requires a lot of support from teachers. Uh, what we find is that a lot of students at some point in their language study, they encounter a plateau. They progress to a certain level and then have difficulty progressing beyond that. Now for students who are studying on their own with a language learning lab, lab, app, that plateau could be very low. Uh, many students, they may learn a little bit of vocabulary, but then still have difficulty communicating with native speakers. Uh, students who have help from teachers can progress farther, but still can reach a point where they find it difficult to progress and feel that proficiency is a very far, uh, a long way off. So we've been working on developing technology that can help students as well as help teachers to reduce the burden on teachers in teaching communication skills in particular. And there's been a need for this um, all along, but the need is particularly apparent now as language classes have transitioned to uh, online learning, either Zoom school or hybrid learning. And it is difficult for teachers in this context to provide students the support that, we, that they need. Here are some quotes from a, an article that was published uh, at uh, the University of Michigan this fall from basically they interviewed students and teachers in a language class that had gone online. And the students were dissatisfied. They felt that they were learning a lot less when they were learning remotely. Uh, internet connectivity issues sometimes were a problem. It was hard for students to understand what the student was doing. I'm sorry, what the, what the teacher was saying. Um, the students weren't getting as much one-on-one -on -one time with their teachers. Uh, the teachers, on the other hand, they observed that uh, carrying out tasks and activities online is much more time consuming and that it wasn't working well because many students were, were missing out. They were failing to connect. Um, and because of the uh, uh, technology issues, many of them were following, falling behind. So we've developed this avatar technology to help uh, overcome uh, some of these uh, uh, limitations designed to provide students with realistic, realistic conversational uh, uh, activities asynchronously online uh, that, uh, that teachers can track but don't require constant supervision and involvement of uh, teachers to uh, uh, carry out the activities. I'll give you a couple of examples here to illustrate what I'm talking about. So on our uh, website, uh, first of all, we can support uh, beginning students uh, to start getting comfortable speaking in a foreign language. 
So for example, here is a basic uh, conversation for students learning to speak Spanish. So I can say hello to uh, the avatar here. Hola. Hola. Como estas? Estoy bien. Gracias. So here students can, they can practice in a safe environment and get comfortable speaking in the foreign language and then progress to improve their, uh, their spoken proficiency. Uh, we can also provide more challenging scenarios for students who are progressing in their, uh, their conversational proficiency that are much more like conversations with native speakers, something like the following. Hi, welcome to the Metropolitan Train Station. Where are you traveling to? Uh, I'm planning a ticket to New uh, tri a trip to New York. Uh, what tickets do you have available? Great. I can help you plan your trip to New York. What day would you like to depart? So you see, this is much more like conversation with a native speaker. But as I'll show you in a moment, uh, we still provide support for learners so that they can get up to this level of conversation and proficiency. So uh, this makes use of artificial intelligence technology in, in multiple ways. Let me just sort of uh, review what uh, the, the main uh, uses of artificial intelligence are here. So first of all, we're using speech and natural language processing technology to uh, drive the uh, behavior of these avatars so they can engage in conversations with students, help them build their communication skills. While this is taking place, the system is automatically assessing their language proficiency. Basically, the interaction is an ongoing formative assessment of language skill, and that enables the platform to provide feedback, to assign exercises for personalized practice, and also provide analytics on the student's proficiency and their progress over time. Uh, we make that now available to students, as well as to teachers, as well as to program administrators. So I'll so show you examples of that, including some of the new tools that we are now developing that make these analytics um, accessible to various uh, stakeholders. So now let me go into uh, the uh, conversation a bit more detail so you can see a bit more how it works. So, uh, let me, again, let's um, go back to our um, train station example here. And one thing that I want to highlight here is that although this is designed so that it can be uh, challenging for students uh, that have already developed some language proficiency, we provide assistance to students who are making that transition to profi uh, proficiency, to give them uh, support of various sorts along the way so that beginners have a positive experience as well. So let's say, uh, look a little bit at, at, at how that is done. Hi, welcome to the Metropolitan Train Station. Where are you traveling to? So if a student is having a little bit difficulty understanding that complex uh, spoken English. They can view a transcript so they can see what it is that has uh, transcribed the conversation up, up to this point. Uh, if they're not sure what to say, they can uh, look for, uh, ask for suggestions of things to say. So there's a general suggestion here of tell uh, the, the ticket agent where you would like to go. There are various ways that you could express that. Uh, here are a couple of examples, but learners are not limited 
to these specific examples. So I, I'll contrast this, this with um, other language learning products out there where you basically have a menu of specific things that you have to read off the screen in order to progress in the dialogue. That's not what was the case here. I can say anything that conveys the intent so that the avatar can understand. So like, for example, I want to go to New York. Great, I can help you plan your trip to New York. What day would you like to depart? So we collect data from learners around the world so that they can, uh, so, so we can see what kinds of mistakes they make in uh, speaking a foreign language. And we use that data to train our AI models so they get better and better at being able to understand common uh, uh, learner mistakes. So for example, let's say I might say the following. I want to leave at first mile. I have a couple of trains that day. Does the train leaving at 2 p.m. work for you? So let, let's, let's look at that. So I made several mistakes that actually we've observed in uh, language learners in Eastern Europe, in Slavic speaking countries, in uh, using uh, uh, in speaking in English, but are uh, common in other uh, speakers as well. So I used the wrong preposition. At instead of on, I said first my instead of May 1st. I mispronounced the word May and it still understood me. Now it then responded and and we'll get feedback at the end of how well we did and where uh, where we need to improve. Uh, what we don't, what we try to avoid in these simulated conversations is interrupting the conversation with grammar instruction. We find that when we do that, it makes the students become more self-conscious self and it becomes less of a conversation and more of a, 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 um, a grammar exercise. So we do capture that information and we can refer back to it in providing of feedback and instruction after the conversation is over. So I'll now continue the conversation as a, as a more proficient speaker would, and then we'll take a look at, at the feedback. So first of all, if I'm not sure what um, said, uh, the avatar said, I could, as in a natural conversation, ask for, um, uh, ask for the avatar to repeat what you said. Sorry, can you say that again? I have a couple of trains that day. Does the train leaving at 2 p.m. work for you? Uh, possibly. When does that train arrive? The train will arrive at 10 p.m. I'm sorry, that's too late for me. Uh, do you have another train? I have a train leaving at 8 a.m. Uh, when does that arrive? The train will arrive at 4 p.m. Okay, book me on the 8 a.m. train then, thanks. Okay, a one-way ticket in first class is $175, and a coach ticket is $100. Would you like a first class or coach ticket? Uh, just uh, book me a coach ticket, please. Okay. Do you need a second ticket to return? Uh, not right now. Okay. We charge $20 for each bag and allow up to two bags. Will you have any luggage? Uh, yes. Reserve one bag for me also. Okay. I'll have your total in a moment. Great, I have one coach ticket for you and one bag. That will be $120. Enjoy New York. So you can see I 
uh, engaged in an extended conversation here. So this is more than you could simply memorize and easily uh, get through. So this is, we're really working to simulate realistic task-based um, real world conversations. So overall, how well did I do here? I, I got an overall mastery score of 24% where uh, we want students at this level to get up to um, 100 if, if possible. So any, the score can be anywhere from zero uh, to 100. So I didn't do uh, better here in part because I didn't meet all of the objectives in the conversation. And, and my, the number of conversational turns per minute was quite low. So a conversational turn is when, uh, how frequently the student can understand what the avatar says and respond. So a, uh, a student at an intermediate level should be able to get up to around five turns per minute, a native speaker in these uh, conversations, maybe up to uh, six turns per minute. Of course, I have a, a, had a low score here because I spent a lot of time explaining as I, as I went and also looking at hints and, and, and whatnot. But this is something that students, if they practice multiple times, then the, um, their turns per minute rate will improve and their overall mastery score will, will improve as well. And then I can get feedback on particular areas where I did well and where I need uh, to improve. So I was able to explain where I wanted to travel to. Um, I didn't ask enough questions about departure and return. In fact, I didn't even buy a return ticket. Um, Although I did ask some questions about departure and arrival times, so that's good. Um, and I stayed within my overall budget. So now I have a choice. I can go back and uh, practice the conversation again, see if I can get to a, uh, a higher score, or I can go through practice exercises that it has selected for me. And, the exercises that it selects depends upon the learner's performance in the conversation. So uh, just to explain here, there is a whole bank of exercises on a variety of different topics. And these are available to teachers. Teachers, if they want, they could assign these um, exercises uh, specifically to students to practice on. But what's happened here is that it's selected particular exercises for me. So let's see what it's selected for me. So it's selected exercises uh, relating to planning trips and reviewing vocabulary, um, uh, phrases, uh, different multimedia exercises that um, reinforce the, um, uh, the language skills here. Um, and in particular, what's reinforcing is the use of the, of, of the present continuous. So I am traveling uh, to New York this weekend. Uh, the, uh, and, then, and then I start applying the language skills that I've learned. So for example, I'm asked to, uh, uh, ask Will, what is he doing this weekend? What will you do this weekend? So here it noticed that I used the wrong verb tense. I said, what will you do this weekend? When I should have said, what are you doing this weekend? So in the context of these exercises, here and skill gives uh, students feedback on grammar so we can reinforce the language skills and then when they're ready they can then go back and practice the conversation again and uh, and see how well uh, they uh, they do now we make this uh, information um, 
uh, the analytics of the performance available uh, both to teachers and to students. So to give you an uh, example of what uh, the analytics are that teachers have access to. So here uh, I'm accessing uh, through my web browser uh, data from a particular course using NSkill. Uh, this, these particular data are from a class at, uh, at UVM Toluca, Universidad de, uh, Universidad de Valle de Mexico. And uh, they've been using our platform for some time now. And so we actually have quite a bit of data on how their students have been progressing. And so then we can look at individual students and actually before I um, look at individual students, look at the profile of time spent. So you see here that some students have spent quite a bit of time practicing. Some students have spent a little bit of time. Some have spent hardly any time. So this helps teachers to quickly identify which students are not practicing enough and hold them accountable to, to do their work. Then for the students who are spending time practicing, we can look at the profile of how they have spent their practice time. So we see here for this particular student, um, how, you know, how many different uh, conversational simulations they have practiced. We can see here that um, this student has practiced quite a few of them. Uh, we see here how many times the student started the conversation and how many times the student completed uh, the conversation. And as we see here in several um, of these simulations, the student just did it once and then went on. So, so this student should be encouraged to go back and practice these some more and try to improve their skills, their scores. I mean, we see here that the scores are for the most part are not terribly high. So this student potentially could benefit from further practice. Um, and in the cases where the student has practiced multiple times, we can see how their performance has progressed through practice. So this particular student uh, practiced this trip to New York conversation multiple times. And so we can see that the student got progressively better. The number of objectives met increased. Uh, the number of turns per minute increased. Uh, the only issue I see here is that the student is still relying on hints. And hints here means broadly um, looking at the transcript or asking for suggestions of, of what to say. All of those um, contribute to the number of hints that are tracked here. Now, students are not um, deducted for using hints. If they need hints, use them. But uh, students who are progressing but still rely on hints should be encouraged to try to practice uh, without hints. And in fact, we now are offering a, an assessment mode for these conversations where all the hints are taken away. And now the student needs to be able to demonstrate that they actually can perform the skill. So, so here are some examples uh, of how this uh, uh, looks from, a, from another simulation. So here, for, for this simulation, we can see um, over time how you know, each time uh, that the student uh, attempted a practice conversation, what their score was, uh, how well they did overall. And then we see how well they did on the, uh, the test uh, conversation. So this, this student actually um, tried this test three times. And, um, and what we see here, you know, in, in this case, that the, the student's uh, test performance was somewhat lower than uh, practice. 
Um, not surprising, but if students have, have fully mastered these conversations, then they should bas basically be able to complete them without relying on hints at a, um, and at a good level of, of conversational uh, proficiency. So now uh, let's um, look a little bit further at the, um, how you put this then into practice. So I want you all to be um, aware that we have provided a set of resources for teachers to help them in getting started with NSkill and with integrating these avatar-based activities into their, uh, into their curriculum. So, so let's actually look at, at, at some of those now. So I'll uh, actually here on my web, web, uh, web browser is um, these set of resources. So just going through these in a bit more detail, there are uh, uh, several webinars that we have recorded and made available. And in fact, we're going to record, we are recording this webinar as well, and we'll make it available on this website. Uh, we have some uh, videos as well as case studies of integrating avatar-based learning into uh, the classroom. And then uh, materials to help teachers to get started and to integrate and skill into their lessons. Uh, these include uh, lesson planning guides that can go, go in detail of how you can combine asynchronous avatar-based learning activities with other classroom activities. So let's, let's take a look at, at one of these. I'm gonna uh, download it right now. Um, And let's take a look at it. So, so, so we create we create these for um, a number of these these simulations, and I would hope that they are are helpful. Uh, you know, you don't have to follow this plan, but this provides uh, some suggestions of how you can complement the avatar-based activities with other classroom activities. So, for this one, is. Uh, the school newspaper interviews conversation where the student is interviewing various students about what they like to do in their free time. Uh, so we see here what the overall learning objectives are. And so then a teacher at the beginning of, of the unit can have a you know, warm up exercise that um, um, just covers basic greetings, as well as talking about, you know, what do you like to do in your free time? Um, what do you like to do after school? Uh, and reinforcing the vocabulary that uh, relating to leisure activities. So students can, can practice this in the classroom. They can practice it in pairs with other students. So student A asks student B, what do you like to do uh, after school? So um, get more familiar with these um, communicative functions. Then the students then engage in practice activities with these simulations. And so we, we, so we define a set of of activities for the students to perform. And what we encourage the students to do depends upon their level of proficiency. So for the beginner students, we will encourage them uh, to start you know, relying on the transcript, the list of object objectives, the directions of, of what to say, and just try to try to get through the conversation. 
and then complete the practice exercise that were, uh, were, were assigned. Um, and then go again, see if they can get to the point where they can get through the conversation without relying on the transcript and on other hints. For intermediate students, we, we set a higher bar. First of all, we want to see them get to a mastery score of, of 80% uh, or more. Uh, we also encourage them to try using different language. So rather than just trying to find phrases that will get through the conversation, try saying things in different ways and, and use your language skills in communicating in this, um, in this context. The more variety of language the students use, the, um, uh, the better overall proficiency they will gain in performing uh, this task. And these tasks, by the way, are aligned with can-do statements in the CEFR uh, standard or the ACTFL standard in the case of, of Spanish and other languages. So if students can master these conversations using a variety of language without relying on hints, then they have gone a long way of really being able to master that can-do statement. So then the can-do statement becomes actually an objective assessment of the student's uh, proficiency. So students then practice as much as they need, and then they can come back to class, and then here are some follow-up activities that students can do in class. Um, that we can have an, you know, an, a discussion with the students. Okay, so you interviewed Avatar Will. What does Will like to do? Um, uh, when does he like to do it? How often? Um, likewise for the other Avatar, Emma, what does she like to do? So this checks comprehension of the conversation and then, and then engage in follow-on activities that utilize uh, the same uh, vocabulary and, and communicative functions. So, and this goes into, into, uh, into further detail here, but you see here that, uh, that by combining the uh, computer-based practice with classroom activities, you can really help the students develop a solid uh, mastery of the uh, uh, of the language skills uh, in the unit. So, and and there are other materials that that we provide. Let's just go th through these. Um, I'll go through these briefly. So we also provide a, a scope and sequence that um, shows. Uh, what the can-do statements are and what the uh, what the language functions are the, the, uh, that are in uh, uh, in each simulation, uh, and we can provide this aligned with specific curricula. So uh, people provide us the scope and sequence of the textbook that they use, then we can provide. A, an alignment of the simulations with the units in that textbook with the class schedule. And because the simulations are aligned with can-do statements, which are likely to appear in any curriculum, it's, 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 it's pretty straightforward for us to uh, uh, align with these different scope and sequences. So, so this goes a step or two beyond uh, even what language learning apps do that provide teacher dashboards. So there are um, apps that, that allow teachers to track students' progress, but that's really just tracking students' progress on, the, um, on what they're doing in the, in the computer. We're trying to provide resources so that the classroom activity and the computer activity 
dovetail um, and, and that we're really supporting both. And so what are some of the uh, results that we see from this? So what, what teachers report from this is that uh, not only are they seeing that it helps their students, but it also helps their classes, that the students cl come to class uh, better prepared and, and more confident and ready to engage in communication. So um, in the uh, lesson plan that I showed you where you come back after students have, have practiced on the computer, to, you engage in activities in the classroom, what teachers experience is that the students are now much better prepared and ready to engage uh, in those activities. Uh, teachers report that the students uh, have more self-confidence, that it overcomes shyness in speaking a foreign language in class in front of their peers. And, and the, the, the tech, they find the technology very engaging. So the students like that they can practice on their mobile phones. They like interacting with the different avatars. So it really makes the language practice much more interesting and engaging than simply going through uh, grammar worksheets uh, and, and the like. And we, and what some um, teachers also do to assess students' progress is that they encourage students to record their own videos of speaking in the language. And, and this can help you quickly identify how students are progressing. So here are a couple of examples from uh, UVM in Toluca, you, uh, from a couple of different students who have used the Alelo platform. And you, know, you can just listen to this and see how well they're progressing. Let's listen to a couple of examples here. My name is Paola. Um, Alelo for me is an app to practice a conversation <laughs> with Avatar. I started using this app three months ago for my class of English. In so she's still a little bit halting. Um, her grammar and pronunciation can still use some improvement, but she's comfortable speaking in front of a camera. Good for her. Now we'll see, see how another student is, is doing. Hello, my name is Genitia Martinez, and I'm going to talk to you about my experience using Alelo. Uh, I started to use Alelo like three months ago when the teacher told us to use it. And so she's actually doing doing quite well. And so what 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 teachers find is that students, regardless of the of their level of proficiency, they're benefiting from this online uh, practice. Hello, my name is Genitia Martin. Uh, and then for students who are progressing to an advanced level or a um, say a B2 level in the CF, CEFR, then we provide more challenging um, business oriented uh, uh, conversation scenarios uh, where students are evaluated on how effective and persuasive their communication skills are. So are they using persuasive language? Are they presenting their arguments in a clear and coherent way? And, and this, by the way, of course, is, is beneficial for language learners, uh, but many native speakers who are preparing to, for jobs that require communicating with customers or with coworkers, with managers, uh, find this type of training to be beneficial because students, they're getting objective assessment of their communication skills and getting feedback, and then they can practice as much as they need. So summarizing here, these are uh, some of the key benefits that uh, that learners and teachers get from using this technology. Uh, the learners gain self-confidence. Uh, they get more opportunities to practice in realistic situations. What we find is that 
uh, the learning is is rapid, efficient, and, and it also um, maintains well over time. Uh, learners come to class better prepared and the classroom learning therefore is more efficient as well. So, um, and this is now being used uh, in a number of countries uh, around the world, uh, both uh, at, the, uh, at the college level, increasingly at the high school and, uh, and middle school level uh, as well. Uh, particularly across Latin America, we've got a lot of students on the platform now. So the, this conclusion of, of my presentation, uh, we'll be happy to provide a certificate of completion to teachers who would like that. Send an uh, email to the address uh, on, the, on the chart there, and we will get back to you on that. Uh, we are making uh, trials of NSKILL available uh, for free to teachers who want to get started. Uh, let us know. We will ha be happy to get you, get you set up so you can see for yourself how students benefit from uh, using this technology. Uh, and, and we are currently, in particular, recruiting schools to try out our new Spanish course. I didn't show much of that today, but that is available and works pretty well for, we think, for intermediate level uh, Spanish learners. So get in touch with us and we'll be happy to get you uh, set up. So at this point, uh, if anybody has questions, uh, I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, type them into the, uh, into, uh, into uh, the, uh, uh, the Q&A session or, or the chat window, and I'll be happy to, uh, to respond to them. And so while I'm waiting for uh, those questions to come in, to say a little bit more about how we can set you up to do a trial. Basically, what, we'll, what we can do is that uh, provide you with login instructions so that you can register your students on the platform and then they can uh, start using it. It's really quite simple as that. Um, what is the cost of purchasing this program for uh, English language uh, instruction? Uh, we'll ha be happy to go over that uh, with you. Uh, send me an email about that. Um, it depends upon the number of students in your program. Basically what we do is we offer um, a, um, uh, a license based upon the number of, um, of registered students. And, and you can manage the number of registered students using the teacher uh, uh, dashboard. So I'll be happy to, uh, 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 to follow up uh, with you on that. But you know, typical price is, I mean, it is um, it just a few um, um, dollars per student per month at most. Um, uh, are languages available for the future? Any uh, Chinese or Japanese plans? Um, Chinese is definitely of interest for us. We've developed a, a, a Chinese uh, prototype. So uh, basically it's, it's, it's really a matter of what the demand is for the courses. So far, the greatest demand is for English, then Spanish, then French, and then Chinese. I think we, we expect uh, uh, to make languages available uh, in that order. Uh, the technology is multilingual, so not much uh, problem in switching to, uh, uh, to a new language. Um, I see among the participants, uh, Ellen Erickson, I'll give her a shout out. So she's running a trial of NSKILL in Sweden in, uh, 
uh, middle school uh, 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 over there, and actually is completing her um, her PhD dissertation research uh, 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 surrounding that. So she's had some good experience working with teachers and students at the middle school level as part of their uh, their English pr uh, program uh, there. Okay, so again, uh, my email address is ljohnson at alelo.com. Uh, if you have any further questions, feel free to get in touch with us and we'll be happy to, um, uh, to talk further. Very good. And uh, yes, yeah, so El comment from Ellen says, yes, it is very exciting. So, uh, and I'll leave it up to Ellen if, if she wants to share her email address, I'm sure um, uh, you know, um, other people could get, get in touch with her. Okay, so I think we're good for now. All right, so thanks very much. Again, we're going to, uh, we're recording this. We will post this on our website. So for uh, your colleagues who are not able to make it, encourage them to go to the teacher resources website that you saw, and then you can um, view it from there. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks for coming.